Let's get you up to speed now on the tech industry. The wave of layoffs continuing. Yeah, McDonald's. I liked it. I liked digestion it. Digestion joke. All right. <laughs> Cheesy. Continuing now with PayPal joining the list, the company announcing it's letting go of 7% of its employees. You're now with what we can expect. We have the Allies. Ali <laughs> Canal and Ali Garfinkel. I've been working on ideas, names like Ali Oop, I think is where I settled. Ali Squared. I like Ali Oop, though. Ali Squared. <laughs> Ali Oop is a little, rolls off the tongue a little yeah, bit. Ali Oop, I kind of like. There's a simple elegance to it. We I can think. have a Twitter poll and we'll decide. Nice to have you both here in studio. We'll start with this, Ali, on the PayPal layoffs, yes. continuing throughout the tech sector. Just another example of this trend that we continue to see, PayPal confirming that 7% reduction in staff, which translates to roughly 2,000 employees, and the cuts will take place over the coming weeks. Now, shares of PayPal did touch session highs on the heels of this news, climbing as much as 3.5%. Uh, shares are currently up about 2% at the moment. But like I said, we've seen this story before, a surge in layoffs after a period of really high personnel spend, heavy investments during the pandemic, so that's trend number one surrounding this earnings season. And then trend number two is that unfavorable macro environment, a hawkish Fed, a pullback in spending, and probably most important heading into this week in particular, that advertising slowdown still very much in the background. We've heard from several companies that advertising is still an up and down story. Spotify saying this morning the ad market is still uncertain. And coupled with that, Cowan actually published a survey earlier this month that showed online ad buyers expect their spending in 2023 to rise just 3.3 percent, which is the softest ad growth outlook in five years. So for companies like Snap, companies like Google, whose businesses really rely on advertising, that ain't good. And that's just a trend that's weighing on earnings, weighing on guidance moving forward in the tech industry. Yeah, it certainly has. And Ali, I know you're digging into the Snap results, what, we, what we're expecting to see here in just under an hour from now. That ad spending is going to be front and center here because we know last quarter it was pretty ugly when it came to Snap. Yeah, it front and center doesn't even actually begin to describe it. When I was looking at Snap's figures, something became really clear to me, and it's that Snap's revenue is ad revenue. Here are some staggering numbers for you guys. In 2021, 2020, and 2019, ad advertising revenue accounted for between 99 and 98% of Snap's total revenue. So this time last year, Snap was describing its advertising business as seasonal and volatile. So the stakes are high, they're uncertain, and in the company's last earning call, Snap is aware of this, right? In the company's last earning call, CEO Evan Spiegel talked about needing to diversify, needing to have other sources of revenue. How However, we'll see if they can actually do that. In that earnings call, what he talked about was efficiency, ROI. What he said essentially was, to achieve this, we're, driving, we're investing in driving scalable, lower funnel performance for our advertising partners and making improvements to our ad platform. So in about an hour less now, we'll see if they've started to deliver on that. Second thing to remember is, TikTok, we've talked about on this show quite a bit. Um, analysts are really worried about the competition from TikTok. Yeah. And, um, and I think I wouldn't count them out, despite the, all the talk about bans, I wouldn't count them out by any means at all as a competitor to Snap, because the reality is Gen Z is TikTok's demographic, Gen Z is Snap's demographic. No question. Here's where the alley-oop comes in. She puts it up in the air. You slam down I got it, it. <laughs> and add to it. I want to pick up on something you said, which is the word efficiency. And this is going to be the million-dollar word on all of these earnings calls. On Spotify this morning, if I had a penny for every time CEO Daniel X said the word efficiency, probably have about a quarter. But that's where all of this, these tech companies are going towards, right? This growth at all cost strategy, it doesn't fly anymore on Wall Street. They had to spend a lot in order to keep up. They can't really do that anymore. They need to curve their expenses. And that's not just on the headcount front. I think they're looking at their products. They're looking at their brands. They're looking at everything within their companies to see where they could trim costs because that's what it, they need to do amid this unfavorable environment. So that's something yeah. to look out for, I think. And they certainly do need to cut costs. That's going to be in focus here with Snap. We know Snap was one of the early ones in terms of trimming their headcount so significantly. So I think analysts are asking whether or not more cuts are likely on the table and what exactly that will look like. Ali Oops, thanks so much. <laughs> I like it. We're, we can work on it. I like it. I like it. I like it. Let's do it. Market.